The human body runs on many different vitamins and minerals. They govern essential functions such as energy production, neurotransmitter synthesis and blood sugar regulation. Essential minerals for humans are calcium, cobalt, chloride, chromium, copper, iodine, iron, magnesium, manganese, molybdenum, phosphorus, potassium, selenium, sodium and zinc. To stay healthy, you need to be getting them on a regular basis from diet. Intermittent fasting works by not eating for a certain period of time and confining your daily eating window in a given time frame. Because of that, it can be slightly harder to meet your daily nutrient requirements as you have less time to get your vitamins and minerals. Short-term deprivation doesn't cause any problems, but long-term deprivation can cause some health issues depending on the mineral. In the rest of this video, I'm going to give you the most important minerals you need for intermittent fasting. They're going to improve your results and cover the most common deficiencies. Number 1. Magnesium. Magnesium is the fourth most abundant mineral in your body and is responsible for the function of over 350 enzymes. It stabilizes blood pressure, strengthens bones, provides neuroprotection and allows your nerves to function properly. Deficiencies in magnesium can promote hypertension, insulin resistance, cardiovascular disease and chronic stress. Stress depletes magnesium by activating the sympathetic nervous system. Stressful events like exercising, fasting, high blood sugar, insulin resistance, sleep deprivation or even feeling anxious makes you burn through magnesium at a higher rate. That's why the more stressed out you are, the more magnesium you need. Intermittent fasting makes you burn through magnesium just like exercise or taking a sauna does. To not become deficient, you need to cover your magnesium requirements in your eating window. Otherwise, fasting will become an increasing stressor you cannot escape from. The RDA of magnesium is 350 to 450 milligrams a day, which three-fourths of the population isn't meeting and is magnesium deficient. Partly, that is the result of the chronic stressed out and insulin resistant lifestyle a lot of people are suffering from. However, the reduction of minerals in the soil and our food plays also a big role. Between 1940 and 1991, magnesium content in vegetables has decreased by 24%, fruit by 17%, meat by 15% and cheese by 26%. In the UK, is approximately 35%. The biggest dietary sources of magnesium are leafy green vegetables, pumpkin seeds, nuts, seafood, legumes, dark chocolate and avocados. You can add them to your main meals in the eating window. However, because of the widespread deficiencies and increasing demand, magnesium supplementation is also worthwhile. I'm using Bioptimizer's Magnesium Breakthrough because they combine all the different types into a single capsule. You can get a sweet discount on the most full spectrum magnesium on the market if you use my link in the description. Number 2. Sodium and Potassium Sodium is important for energy production, digestion and electrolyte balance. Deficiencies in sodium can cause muscle cramping, brain fog, fatigue, water retention and even insulin resistance. It can also create binge eating and refeeding after breaking the fast because the body is depleted of this essential nutrient. Similar to magnesium, your body loses sodium during stress and sweating. Fasting can cause arrhythmia or cramping if you fast for a long period of time due to sodium deficiency. Lower levels of insulin because of being in a fast state or by restricting carbohydrates also increases excretion of water weight and loss of electrolytes through urine. To prevent complications with sodium, you should consume some salted water during the fast state and salt your food to taste. If you're fasting for less than 16 hours, then it's not inherently needed to be drinking additional sodium as long as you eat food that has some salt in it. It becomes increasingly more important the longer you fast and definitely needed when fasting for over 24 hours. The RDA for sodium is 1500 to 2300 milligrams, which is about 1 teaspoon or 6 grams of salt a day. However, this may not be enough while fasting or when eating a low carb ketogenic diet. Instead, you may want to aim for 3000 to 4000 milligrams of sodium, which is up to 2 teaspoons of salt. Sodium works in balance with potassium. Deficiencies in potassium can weaken muscle contraction, cause arrhythmia, and impair insulin production. Low potassium activates calcium signaling, which results in chronically excessive autophagy leading to calcification. That's why you should be eating a lot of vegetables during your eating window to get enough potassium. Even fresh meat has some potassium, but only if it's not overcooked. Salted pork! Number 3. Iodine Iodine is essential for producing thyroid hormones and maintaining metabolic rate. Deficiencies in iodine can cause hypothyroidism or low thyroid function. Hyperthyroidism causes fatigue, hair loss, frailty, osteoporosis, constipation and goiter. During pregnancy and lactation, iodine is needed for the child's physical and mental development. Thus, women should be more cautious with their iodine intake. Fasting can lower thyroid because of increased stress and nutrient deficiencies. That's why an iodine deficiency on top of that would make things worse. The RDA for iodine is 150 micrograms, but a lot of people are still deficient. 
The most abundant food sources of iodine are seaweed like kelp, nori and algae. Fish, crab, shrimp and lobster are also high in iodine. Non-seafood sources of iodine are iodine-fortified milk, bread and salt, as well as meat. Certain vegetables and tubers like broccoli, kale, cabbage and cassava have goitrogenic compounds that inhibit iodine absorption. If you consume them in excess, it can cause hypothyroidism and iodine deficiencies. Cooking and soaking vegetables reduces the amount of goitrogens in them. So you shouldn't be eating a lot of raw salads and vegetables all the time because it can interfere with thyroid function, especially if you're iodine deficient. Number 4. Selenium Another essential mineral for thyroid function is selenium. It also governs antioxidant defense and scavenging of free radicals by boosting glutathione, the body's master antioxidant. Glutathione peroxidases are selenoenzymes that regulate thyroid hormone synthesis. They also protect thyroid cells against hydrogen peroxide and other free radicals, which would otherwise inhibit thyroid function. Low selenium also weakens immunity. Selenium deficiency has been linked to the pathogenicity of several viruses and survival from pneumonia due to influenza. The top foods for selenium are Brazil nuts, organ meats like kidney, seafood, meat and fish. Number 5. Iron and copper. Iron is essential for hemoglobin transportation, which helps to transfer oxygen to muscles and cells. Fasting can easily lead to low iron or anemia, especially in women or people who don't eat red meat. If you eat foods like meat, lentils, spinach, pumpkin seeds, vegetables, fish and dark chocolate, then you're probably getting enough iron. Excess iron is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease and can be toxic, so consult your doctor first before supplementation. Iron deficiency anemia is more often than not actually the result of copper deficiency. Since the 1930s, iron deficiency has been known to be cured by increased copper intake. Low copper levels or hypokaremia has been linked with anemia since the 1940s. Copper binding proteins regulate iron absorption and iron release from storage tissues. Copper deficiency inhibits iron absorption, reduces heme synthesis and causes iron overload in the body. High iron consumption blocks copper absorption, causing copper deficiency and increasing copper demands. Iron gelation, on the other hand, has been shown to reverse copper deficiency. It's very hard to become actually iron deficient as long as you're eating some animal foods and meat. Copper deficiencies are more common because copper is mostly in organ meats like liver and oysters. Beans and lentils are also higher in copper than most muscle meat, and they can also gelate iron to a certain extent due to their phytonutrients. Thus, a high muscle meat diet can lead to an iron overload and copper deficiency, unless you balance it with enough copper from things like liver. Ooh, that's some copper. Number 6. Zinc Zinc is an essential mineral involved in cell growth, protein synthesis and protecting the immune system. It's also essential for bone calcification and wound healing. Zinc deficiency is associated with hypothyroidism and severe alopecia, which is why both hypothyroidism and low zinc causes hair loss. Supplementing zinc in those who are deficient improves thyroid function. As you can see, minerals are very important for optimal health and regulating the body's essential functions. Many diseases originate from nutrient deficiencies because the body doesn't have the required resources to work properly. Intermittent fasting can be very beneficial for your health and overall vitality. However, it needs to be coupled with a nutrient-dense diet that includes the right amount of essential nutrients. Alright, that's it for this video. If you want to check out the free full guide to intermittent fasting, then check out the link in the description. But other than that, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Stay empowered.